Well, folks, you know, you can always leave it to Steve Bannon to pull the crazies out of the woodwork. And it seems like he's done just that again yet today. There's someone that he interviewed on his show, and her name is Jennifer Billick. And I found an article on the European Conservative that I want to show you. And then we'll go into the, the piece where I've got her actually on his show. But um, again, the European Conservative has got an interesting article on her. And it kind of goes into this crazy ideology. And basically what she's saying is that there are really no transgender people. There are people trying to disown their humanity. And her premise is that these profiteering capitalistic companies globally have aligned to create this space for transgender people to be able to flourish in today's world. And there really aren't transgender people. It's uh, just people trying to disown their humanity. I mean, ridiculous stuff. And one of the things that you'll notice in here, and I'll play her clip, is that there is no medical science that comes into this, right? She, There's no psychology. There's no medical science. This is just her, her way, essentially, of pushing the transgender people back into, you know, some sort of a space where she doesn't have to deal with it. I think that's what this is all about. And I want you to listen to what she said on his uh, broadcast right here, folks. Have a listen. Audience, we, we, uh, this is a central, central to the assault on our culture and society. I just want to go back. I, I thought there was this whole movement that started as part of the bullying and everything that came out that there was this, all this issues with identification and you had a real there is. Uh, a nexus out there of these people uh, and this was a, a human right and they were being tormented they were they being are. tortured they were being oppressed they are, they are. It was to... I mean I'm not making that up this is this is the truth they are being tortured they're being oppressed and they have been for generations going back ever since the beginning of earth I mean people that are gay or transgendered have been ridiculed and you know, tortured, etc. I mean, this this is this is a fact. Both sides, it was all this, and the traditional way of looking at things uh, was the problem. The, the the patriarchy, the the hierarchy we have, the the way that it's so rigid <laughs> that we look at gender and uh, and sex, and and that was the problem. You're, you're telling us now that you 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 have been doing this for ten years. You're telling us that's all hokum. Absolutely, all of it. Every single little bit of it is all illusion. They are, gender rights are actually rights for people who want to disown reality. So you have to ask the right questions. Why are people who want to disown their reality, you know, biological reality, being given special rights? I mean, that doesn't really make any sense. And why is society being, being rearranged for them? When they're what, like zero, you know, point zero three percent of the population. Well, there's a good point. I mean, so zero point three of the population, zero point three percent of the population. Why, why can't you just ignore these people? I mean, your chances of coming across one are very slim. Uh, why is it a big deal? It, it really is just such a small segment of the population. What are they requiring of you, Miss Billack? I mean, to exist. Are they putting some sort of undue pressure on your existence, this 0.3%? I mean, you don't have to recognize them personally, but they, they can exist. And, you know, again, the whole medical science or psychology, you know, behind someone and whether they identify with this or that or are gay or straight or transgender, I mean, th th this stuff has been around ever since... You know, people have been scratching uh, sticks together to make fire. I mean, this isn't something new. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke because, as she'll tell you, she thinks that it's all the profiteering companies that have created this space for them to prol proliferate. That's absolute madness. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Madness. But, so I follow the money, and there's enormous capital going into this um, to drive this ideology through our institutions, all of our institutions, the the hundred most um, uh, the highest um, uh, revenue law firms are like the hundred top law firms internationally all have a platform, an LGBT platform. 
the uh, the ACLU is being given millions and millions of dollars to drive the the narrative that sex is not real. Um, all of I don't know if that's quite right. I think it's recognizing what people identify with. I don't think they're saying that sex is not real. I don't think that anybody can look down and um, and say that's not real. Our, our human rights organizations, our medical institutions, our educational institutions, this is all right through all of them. The idea that we, this ideology that we, that sex is not real, sexual dimorphism is not real, that sex exists on a spectrum. So like science, you know, and, you know, nature, you know, for hundreds of thousands of years of human evolution somehow got this wrong. And now suddenly there are hang all on. of these sexes. But, but hang on a second. We just had the whole first hour turned over to this terrorism attack in Moscow. What's happening on the southern border? We had intel experts in here talking about it. And Cash Patel, who's a senior guy at DNI, said today on the website, I think of DNI. On the day when he had this uh, ISIS attack, hundreds of people are dead. We don't know what's going to happen in the United States. Is they're saying it's so great because the CIA's had their first transgender agent, and that this shows uh, a tremendous progress in our intelligence community and going to make it more effective to protect the American people uh, through uh, intelligence because God. of we now have transgender witch. people that are spies. What say you? Uh, you know, you might as well just say unicorn people. You know, Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> God. where do these people come from? I mean, again, a third of the population, 0.3% of the population uh, consider themselves to be transgen transgendered. And evidently that's, that's a problem for her. She can't deal with that. And what about the fact that the CIA hired the first transgender person? Can somebody please explain to me how that can't help us gather more intelligence operate in spheres that otherwise maybe we didn't have CIA people and thereby in getting that intelligence that they wouldn't have otherwise had, how is that bad for the CIA? I don't, I don't understand. Does every CIA person have to be, you know, like six foot three, you know, jet black hair, you know, tie Brooks brothers, polo or what have you. I mean, the notion that CIA can't operate in circles other than what we think they should operate in is ass backward. And so folks, take a look at this. I've got to show you this. So this is the article that I was talking about. And again, European conservative, I just want to touch on a few of these different things. So she is an artist and activist and investigative journalist based out of New York City. And her work has been published in Tablet Magazine, The Federalist, The Post Millennial, and elsewhere all of which are conservative, I believe. Billick spent her life on the left, she says, but now she says she is in the political wilderness reporting on the biggest cultural story of our day while progressives ignore it or cover it up. Well, I'd like to see her a little bit more in the wilderness because uh, her views are absolutely insane. So the article says Billick is doing something that journalists used to do instinctively, follow the money. What she has uncovered is a bombshell that reveals the extent to which the transgender phenomenon has been created by super wealthy LGBT donors who have dark, who have a dark and sinister agenda, of course, right? You got to watch out for those super wealthy LGBT donors. They are not to be trusted. It's always about an agenda. And she'll touch on that again. You know, folks, um, I, I believe that they just want to exist, right? Coexist. There is no agenda. There is no threat or plot to take over the world here. So one of the questions was in this interview in this article is, you've done groundbreaking reporting on the extent to which billionaires have quietly been backing the LGBT movement behind the scenes. To what extent are the cultural shifts we've seen in the past few years astroturfed by big donors? She goes on to say, gender ideology is basically marketing disassociation from sexed reality presented as progressive, which is especially confusing to young people in using their naturally rebellious youthfulness as a corporate trap. So, you know, if someone is gay or if they are transgendered and they've probably felt like that their whole entire life to her, it is nothing more than marketing uh, by these wealthy corporations as a corporate trap. 
That's all it is. She goes on to say, both the money and the ideology come out of the medical tech sector, which is itself being integrated into culture through a philanthropic structure that has been attached to the LGBT civil rights political apparatus. So they're part of the deal, I guess, right? The hospitals and the medical tech sector, they're all part of the conspiracy. She goes on to say the tech giants, Google, Intel, Microsoft, Facebook, Salesforce, Hewlett Packard, and Amazon leverage their financial power both to fund this industry and body disassociation and also to browbeat entire states to accept this ideology by threatening the withdrawal of their capital. You know, it, it is no sinister plot here. I mean, the fact she's totally forgetting the fact that this has existed, as I said, for thousands and thousands of years, ever since people have existed, there have been people who associate as transgender or gay. And then all of a sudden to say that, no, this is a corporate trap that's been set by LGBT capitalistic donors here in corporate America, you know, to, to pull them in is absolutely mind boggling. But I'm covering this because I think we need to know about the crazies that are out there, folks. She goes on to say that the rapid proliferation of this ideology is attributed to tremendous financial pressure and mainstream media censorship of critics. So now she's saying that the media has censored the critics of transgenderism to allow an extra space. You know, if as if corporate America wasn't doing enough in her mind, you know, now the media's in on it. I don't know. It's, it's just, uh, it's mind boggling to me. So she, the question now is in this article, how has big money impacted the trajectory and influence of the transgender movement? And she says, I prefer to characterize this phenomenon as an industry rather than a movement. So again, she can't reckon with the reality of the way someone has probably felt their entire life, right? It's an industry. I can't see the medical side. I can't see how you feel. I can't see how you felt since you were a child or anything, whether you thought you were gay when you were three or what. I can't see that. I can't deal with it. It's an industry. <laughs> God. Oh, Lordy. I'll tell you what. And so she says, um, what the article says, what are the primary goals and motives of those pouring their money into the LGBT organization? And then she says, basically, the strategic linking of an agenda aimed at deconstructing reproductive sex with a civil rights movement centered on same-sex attraction was pure genius. Again, it's, a, it's an agenda, right? It's a, it's a conspiracy. It's their way of sort of soft-coding how they, they deal, perhaps, with LGBT people or how they deal with transgenderism. It's their way of putting a wrapper around it. It's an agenda. That's how they do it. It's an agenda. It, it's no, nobody is really like this. It's an agenda that they have. And, um, and at the end here, folks, this is interesting too. So they give you a little bit of advice on how to push back on transgenderism, which is insidious. The article's question was with LGBT organizations receiving enormous infusions of cash from financial backers, how can small grassroots groups push back? And again, she says, there are no transgender individuals. So what exactly are these funds supporting? They are fueling an effort to confer human rights upon a segment of the population who are seeking to disown their humanity, a concept that warrants closer examination. Maybe she's leaving a little bit of room there for medical science, right? A concept that warrants closer examination. She goes on to say that by reframing the narrative away from human rights or the marginalized, towards rights for those attempting to disown their humanity, we can offer a fresh perspective. So again, her pushback is, you're just trying to disown your humanity. And then she also suggests that we should reclaim language. Every time we hear, they use their fabricated terms like transgender or gender identity or correct pronoun usage, we inadvertently reinforce the notion of people existing outside the boundaries of our species biological sex. Emphasizing clarity over the expedience of communication is vital. Rather than responding to questions as if transgender is a genuine category, a more effective approach is to inquire about this meeting, challenge, challenging the assumed understanding. So it's, it's all just a, a way that they can push back. 
you know, it's just, it's, it's an invention, you know, of, of, of their hatred, I think for anyone who's gay or transgender, it's just a, it, they've, they're trying to make it easy for people to push back And the, obviously, uh, you know, by saying this is all an invention of corporate America is their way of doing that and trying to reframe the narrative. It's a desperate struggle of trying to reframe the narrative of something that, that people have been, again, since the end of time, talking gay, transgender, and straight. I mean, those classes have existed since there were people on this earth, folks. So I want to thank you for joining me. We have to know what these nut jobs are up to, and I, th I think we've got a good idea of it here. Till next time.